All right, welcome everyone to our final panel, um, our final round table, our final event of this wonderful conference that has taken place um, since Thursday. My name is Emily Fraser Rath, and I am a visiting assistant professor of German studies at Davidson College. It's a small liberal arts college located just north of Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm also uh, the executive director of the BGHRA. Although my, um, working as a visiting assistant professor um, will end at some point, I found that working with the BGHRA, with Rosemary and Kavina and our growing leadership group, including our student interns who you'll hear from today, has been a place where all the positive things about being in academia can come together in ways that matter. We are building the BJHRA Institute and Academy to make room for and space for work that um, serves the Black German community globally. We're welcoming you today to our final panel and the finale to this amazing conference. This panel is about praxis. What can we do? What are we doing to support Black scholars in German studies and Black German studies in particular? What can we do to support young scholars interested in Black German studies and engage responsibly, ethically, in communities and classroom settings while engaging with Black German studies? How can we do Black German studies for Black Germans? We offer here three presentations that seek to offer perspectives on some of these questions. First, Pat Kield will take talk about his experience in German 231, Black German Art and Resistance, which is the class that he took with Rosemary and me last semester at Davidson College. Um, and that it, this class, you can all be partial witness to, through the recordings of our conversations with artists, activists, and scholars that are available for free and to everyone on our YouTube page. So if you go to YouTube, Black Germans, um, you'll see them. Pat will share his final project for the class, which I know you'll enjoy, his journey through this hybrid class that was part survey of Black German studies, part community engagement course, and part ongoing conversation with people whose lives and work intersect with, inform, and shape Black German studies. After Pat's presentation, we'll hear from Sasha Daniels, who is our new graduate student coordinator for the VGHRA, and who will share their journey to Black German studies and their work with our organization. And finally, Olivia Howard, Michaela Thornton, and Asia Curtin, our undergraduate student coordinators and BJHRA interns will talk about their journeys and experiences, as well as their work for our organization and beyond. Please collect all of your questions as we're now accustomed uh, in the Q&A section of the little button down below. And please, uh, you know, light up the chat with your comments and encouragement for our wonderful students. So without further ado, I will introduce our first roundtable participant um, slash panelist, Pat Kielb. Pat Kielb is a first generation American and a sophomore at Davidson College. Uh, he is planning on finishing his physics degree and receiving a PhD to pursue a career in research. In his free time, he volunteers as a Bonner Scholar in the Davidson area and um, likes to make music and do photography. He has been interning at the BGHRA now for a few months and is our website uh, developer and coordinator. So with that, I'll turn things over to Pat. Hi, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank you for the introduction. And I want to thank you all for this opportunity to be here. I'll be presenting a song which I made last semester for class which Dr. Emily Fraser Rath and Dr. Rosemary Pena co-taught at Davidson College. This song is called Human Stories and it is about being open-minded, accepting our differences and learning.
Um, let's see if we can figure out the technology part. <laughs> Awesome. Creative machines trying to change the world. We destroy, we create, we love, we hate. We are humans and we have the opportunity to do great things. By accepting each other's differences and learning, we can simply ask ourselves Who am I? Who are you? Who are we? Different humans with a different story. But that story's still a human story You can look for a difference or a similarity Wait, Who am I? Who are you? Who are we? Different humans with a different story But that story's still a human story You can look for a difference or a similarity Open up your mind and have a look around Different people, different views And you only set in bounds to Your perspective and what you want to view And you'd rather pay money to go see a different view But right in front of you there could be something found Not only different views, but also different sounds That inspire you to think of something new A change of perspective that led to a breakthrough Wow, so simple yet so complicated And all of a sudden you feel liberated Happiness is correlated to balance and love and that's not debated so let me leave you with a single question what is life and why is there aggression is it fair for me to ask this question has no answer but here's a suggestion who am i who are you who are we different humans with a different story but that story's still a human story you can look for a difference or a similarity who am i who are you who are we different humans with a different story but that story's still a human story You can look for a difference or a similarity Do you know who you really are? It's okay if not but don't drift away too far Just like the strings on a guitar You can fall at a tune and never be a star But that's why they created the tuner An easy tool to check in sooner with Yourself and the people that surround you Not only them but also the ones that are bound to you your family and your environment mold you to you but you choose who to represent so follow yourself and what you believe ain't no person out there that can tell you to leave who am i who are you who are we different humans with a different story but that story's still a human story you can look for a difference or a similarity who am i who are you who are we different humans with a different story but that story's still a human story You can look for a difference or a similarity uh, um. No, I can't stop sharing it. Wait, stop sharing <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my song, and I hope you enjoyed it. So now a little bit about our class. Our class, Black German Art and Resistance, explored contemporary literature, music, film, poetry, theater, and activism that has been written, created, performed, and enacted by Afro and Black Germans. Dr. Pena and Dr. Fraser Rath brought in weekly guest speakers from around the world, such as Amal Abbas, Dr. Michael McKittrin, Imani Jones Pugh, Dr. Natasha Kelly, and many others. Many of the classes I've taken in college often feel bound to the classroom. However, this class had a much bigger impact on me and I feel how I see the world. We learned about the German identity, memory culture, the politics of representation, East Germany, racism, resistance, and forms of activism, coalition, and solid, solid solidarity building and more. I am truly grateful for this opportunity to have taken this class and I hope many more have this experience. Thank you and Awesome, Kat. Thank you so much and thank you again for sharing that song. Every time I hear it, I just it just brings me back to our class and um, I know I really love it and my daughter really loves it, especially the little part that goes, hey, what? That part is really awesome.
All right, thank you so much, Pat. Now um, we'll move on briefly. We'll have lots of time to talk uh, with Pat about his song, about the class, about all things um, after after our our next uh, uh, two groups go. So next we have Sasha Daniels, pronouns they or she. Um, Sasha joined the Germanic Studies Department at UT Austin in 2020. Daniels is a graduate of West Virginia University where they earned their bachelor's degree in world languages, literature, and linguistics with a concentration in German and a minor in Japanese studies. Um, she is a three-time U.S. State Department alum, having received the Benjamin A. Gilman Scholarship to study abroad in Japan in 2016, as well as the Congress Bundestag Youth Exchange uh, Scholarship to study in Germany in 2011. Uh, they also had the Fulbright U.S. Student English Teaching Assistant Award to teach at the Grasshof Gymnasium in Essen, Germany in 2018. Daniels' research at UT Austin focuses on the African diaspora in Germany, Afro-German youth culture, Afro-German poetry, Afro-German film, German colonialism in Africa, and German hip-hop. They serve as the secretary of the Black Graduate Student Association at UT Austin. They are also an active member of the Fulbright alumni community as a co-chair and communications and outreach officer of Fulbright uh, Noir. Sasha is also the graduate student coordinator for the Black German Heritage and Research Association. And if any of you, and hopefully all of you have gone to our swag site, you'll see the amazing uh, work that Sasha has done to create our mm -hmm. merchandise, um, advertising this conference. And please do go there and visit and buy things because all of that money goes to our graduate student programming and to um, support our artists. So without further ado, please go, um, please go for it, Sasha. Hi, Emily, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to just shortly share my screen. So as Emily mentioned, hi, my name is Sasha Daniels. I use they, she pronouns, and I'm currently a master's student at the University of Texas. Uh, I'll be graduating this semester, so yay for that. Um, and I'd like to bring you all my journey to Black German studies. I'd like to call this presentation Born of My Sister, because if it weren't for my sister, um, I honestly may not even be at this conference right now. I wouldn't be interested in the field that I'm interested in. So um, exactly, I'd like to dedicate this presentation to her and I will show you exactly why. So this is a very important photo to me, not only because I'm in it, but also because it is a the first time that my father had all of his children together at one time. Um, here I am in the wonderful overall jeans. Um, this photo was taken in about 1997, 1998. And so I was about four or five years old. And this includes four of my siblings um, from my father's side. My father was a, in the army and uh, he, before I was born, he had my siblings here, my brother to the right of me, and then my sister and brother to my left um, from a previous marriage before I was born. And then I came along and shortly after I was born, um, he had orders to move to Germany. And so um, a few years later, fast forward to this day, I remember my mother told me um, that I was going to the zoo with all of my siblings. And this small child walks into my house and I'd never seen her before. And I was wondering, okay, I've never met this person. And my mom explains to me that she's my sister. And so she was very shy and I thought maybe, okay, because we're all kids we've never met, that's why you know she's not speaking to me. But then I later found out it's because uh, my sister didn't speak English. This was my first, her first time in the US. My sister was, um, her first language is German. She was born in Berlin, Germany. Her mother is German. And um, I thought when we were younger, okay, maybe, you know, she doesn't like me, she doesn't want to talk to me, but it's just simply because we didn't understand each other. So when I, as I grew, grew older, I realized, I remember this moment that, you know, I have a sister in Germany that doesn't speak German. So that pushed me honestly to want to learn German. When I was in middle school, 
my social studies teacher started a multicultural club at my school, and she gave students the opportunity to learn Spanish, Japanese, or German. All of these are languages that I know now, but at the time, German was the important one for me because I felt it had a reason since I had that connected, uh, that connectedness to speech with my sister eventually to learn her own language. So I remember being 11 years old, trying to learn German. Uh, I thought that the sharp S was a B, so I made many mistakes all the time when I would speak. And it's funny to think about now that I'm fluent in the language because then I really, really uh, struggled with it at first. But I thought to better learn the language, a way that I wanted to connect uh, and listen to the language more and connect to the culture more was through something that I enjoyed. So I was very into music and still am into music, but especially when I was in middle school. So in the early days of YouTube in the early 2000s, I would go to German music and turn to German music to learn about pronunciation, to test my understanding of the language. And some of these albums here actually were the ones that I use. Um, if you listen to any German music in the late 1990s, early 2000s, you may recognize some of these album covers. Um, but this was a way that I could relate to German culture and German music as a child from Washington, DC, who had no previous connections to Germany. So what I would do was take my favorite songs and translate them. And that's how I would get vocabulary. That's how I would get understanding. And it really helped with learning how real Germans speak, as some people say. Um, so I learned a lot of slang terms and it helped me sound more natural for when I would eventually go to Germany. Also, what was important in learning German through music was that I got to see representation of different groups that uh, I otherwise didn't see. I had no formal, um, no formal German classes until I was an undergrad. So through German music, being able to see people of color who made German music, that made me relate to it even more. So I learned about Turkish Germans and also Black Germans through the music that I listened to. And so when I was 17, this idea of Germany that I had through music, uh, I went to Germany for the first time. In the this was my first time leaving the country. And I got the Congress Bundestag Youth Exchange Scholarship to study in Germany for a year. Um, this is a photo of me at the Bundestag with a CDU representative, Henning Otto, and two other American students who also had Congress Bundestag scholarships who lived in my city. And this was a mind change. This was a life changing experience for me because not only was my first time in out of the country, but also this was this showed me something that I spent at this point six to seven years learning this language, and it really helped me pay off and live in the culture and really experience something that I had only seen on you through books in real life for an entire year of my life. So once I'd come back to the US, I ended up going to West Virginia University where I, ma I majored in German. So world languages, literature and linguistics with my concentration on German. And then my minor was in Japanese studies. And because of my minor in Japanese studies, I actually had the chance to go to Japan with the Benjamin A. Gilman scholarship. And this is my summer course here in Japan in, in Osaka. And that experience also, um, even though I never planned on going to Japan or studying Japanese, it was just a lovely addition to the intercultural experiences that I got through university. And so once I got my bachelor's degree, I applied for a Fulbright, uh, a Fulbright scholarship. And with a Fulbright scholarship, I was actually in Germany for two years. I was an English teaching assistant in Essen, Germany. And through this time in Fulbright, um, through my first year and through my second year. My second year really kind of changed my view on a lot of things in Germany because not only was I in part of my community in Essen, but also part of the Fulbright community, I got in touch with Fulbright Noir. Fulbright Noir is an alumni-based, an alumni-created group of Black Fulbrighters. It was first created by three Black Fulbrighters who had gone to Spain, Belgium, and France. And now we are in a huge group of Fulbrighters from all around the world. And this helped me focus my, my research and kind of my interest on the needs of Black people in Europe. So when I was finishing my Fulbright year, that kind of turned my gaze into what I wanted to focus on once I was going to college. So working on my master's and what I'm doing now in Texas. So as Emily also mentioned in my uh, introduction, I am currently the co-chair and communication outreach officer of Fulbright Noir. So I went from simply just being a member to now 
being the co-chair. So that's a great, great feeling as well. And I'm also the Black Graduate Student Association Secretary for the University of Texas at Austin. And here um, for my master's, I, my focus is Black German studies. And these are just some of the things that I've written on, some of the things that I've worked on. Um, during my first semester, I wrote a history of Blackness in Germany. I've also looked at um, poetry, so Afro-German poetry, and the relationship between Audre Lorde and Maya Eames specifically. I've looked at um, African-American culture and the influence that it's had on East German culture. And um, also linguistics, because our program is very linguistics centered. I've looked at um, German linguistic colonialism in both Namibia and Togo and compared those currently to how they are today. Being at the University of Texas, we uh, focus a lot on Texas German, which is another dialect of German that unfortunately will be dying out in the next 10 to 15 years. But because I have a background in Texas German, I've compared that to another German diasporic language which was Namibian Kitchen German and looked at the two different similarities between those. I've also taken classes in Black German or Black studies. And so um, recently I've written about how uh, a lot of African-American authors have found their solace in Europe, specifically W.E.B. Du Bois and James Baldwin. So as I mentioned earlier as well, this is my last semester, my master's degree, I am uh, graduating this semester. So my thesis is working on um, the Afro-German identity in post-migration Germany, specifically in post-migration Germany. So looking at how German identity has changed to nowadays versus when uh, Fabian came out in the early 90s. And of course, uh, we are at the BGHRA conference. I also hold a few hats here in the BGHRA or the BGH with the BGHRA. Um, I am the graduate student coordinator, as well as the web store designer. Um, Emily mentioned a little bit about the web store earlier, but if you haven't seen any of our uh, designs, I actually helped create all of these designs as well with the wonderful artwork we have uh, donated from Maseho. And so these are a few of the designs that we have. Um, we have all types of different um, apparel, such as yeah, clothes, water bottles, bags, mugs, anything you can think of. So please take the time to go to our website and check that out. I will be very happy if you do. And because you are attending the conference, there is also a coupon code that we have for everyone attending the conference. So BGHRA 10, that will give you 10% off of all of your purchases. So please do check that out when you get the time to do that. Another project that I'm working on with the BGHRA is the BGHRA Graduate Student Group Initiative, Initiative Group. And so you may ask, what does this group entail? But this is something that I would like to start with the help of a lot of people who are attending today. So I really would like to create this group of graduate students to find community with one another, because that's something that I realized that I look for as a master's student is to find other graduate students who have similar interests as me. So in this group, we could share resources, also exchange opportunities, whether that be whether that be call for papers or anything you think another graduate student interested in Black German studies would be interested in. We can also exchange articles, papers for peer editing and different advice. And it doesn't always have to be completely academic. We can also just have virtual hangouts, regional hangouts, depending on where the members are, whether that be nationally or internationally, hopefully also internationally. But the aim of this group is to essentially represent Black German studies in a graduate student setting um, as a collective. So if that interests you, or if you know of a student that that would interest, um, you can email me. This is my email, my school email, but you can also um, email Emily or Dr. Pena and uh, let, give them your insight or let them know that you're interested. And if for whatever reason, if you misplace our emails and you forget or anything or if anything's misspelled, you can always contact us at BGHRA through our contacts tab on the website on the right-hand side of the toolbar. So. Thank you very much. Um, I hope I didn't ramble too much. I was all freely speaking. I had nothing written down. <laughs> so I hope um, you all enjoyed my journey through German studies, through Black German studies. And I hope to see you all at, later on at the uh, get togethers and the after party. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sasha. Um, and just like Pat, you received a ton of love for your song and sharing your story. Sasha, you're receiving a lot um, as well. Um, people who want to read your work, especially on the Texas German in Namibian Kitchen uh, German, which I think is so fascinating and so do many people here. Other people thanking you for sharing your experience learning German, um, specifically from an Afro-German centric 
um, learning aids that you've used. Uh, congratulations. Fulbright Noir is new to people and lots of people shopping. <laughs> so that's amazing. Fascinating stories and great. So more questions for Sasha uh, in a few minutes, but before we get uh, to the sort of roundtable discussion and Q&A portion, I'd like to introduce our final uh, presenters. And um, Olivia, Michaela, and Asia will be presenting um, together. So first we have Olivia Howard, um, whose pronouns are she, her. She is a current undergraduate student at Davidson College where she's pursuing a double major in biology and German studies, um, pre-med. And Olivia and I are now in our fourth semester together. She's taking a class with me at each semester at Davidson. And I'm so honored to have her um, and Pat as students here at Davidson. So her post, um, Olivia's postgraduate plans are to earn her biology master's and a PhD in, in Germany uh, to pursue a career in research. Olivia is a Bonner Scholar as well as Pat and has been working with the BJHRA since early summer 2021. Michaela Thornton is currently a senior, almost graduated at James Madison University in Virginia, where she studies both German and psychology. Michaela joined the BGHRA last fall semester in fall 2021 as well, and plans to continue her work with us postgraduate, which we're so looking forward to, obviously. And finally, um, Asia Currington um, also goes by the pronoun she, her, is in her final year studying English literature and German studies as an undergraduate at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Um, as well as serving as the current assistant to the, the president or to Rosemary at uh, the VGHRA. She is a member of UCSB's Department of Germanic and Slavic Studies, Justice, Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Council, which goes by the acronym JEDI, Justice, J-E-D-I, which I think is super awesome. Her primary areas of Interests cluster around how discourses in German studies intersect with insights from minority studies, urban studies, and critical theory. She's also interested in the theory and practice of literary translation. Uh, we heard a little bit about her work uh, yesterday, or two days ago, now I can't remember, Friday um, at 2 p.m. So if you missed her talk then, please look for the recording um, that will be forthcoming. This is the, her current project, The Language of Interracial Politics in Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye and its German translation, Der Blaue Augen, um, which examines the translation of African American English into German. In the fall of 2022, she will begin her doctoral studies in German studies um, at an institution yet to be announced. So uh, with that, I'm turning things over to Asia, Michaela, and Olivia. Okay, um, okay. Okay. And then I think it's one more, okay. Hi, um, I'm Olivia. Um, thank you so much for that introduction, Dr. Fraser Ra. Um, so I guess I'll start with introducing, I guess, my journey into German studies and then how I got involved with the organization and what I have done. So um, from an early age, um, I was interested in German history. I was raised Jewish. So from a young age, I learned about the Holocaust and Germany like within the context. And then in middle school, I had the opportunity to start um, learning the language. And so that background just kind of fueled my interest. And as I continued taking the language and learning more about the history, I was able to discover more marginalized groups that were um, in the German context um, and just learning about these untold histories. And um, eventually, I recently, I hate to say that I recently found out, but getting into um, more undergraduate studies, um, I shifted away from, I guess, the more Americanized German history of um, only certain marginalized groups being in Germany. And I've learned more about Black Germans and just seeing how Blackness kind of transcends um, outside of America and how movements here also translate across the um, globe. And so it's just been an honor and just, I've been become very passionate about learning about um, black 
movements occurring in Germany and just the untold history and just learning more about it. And so um, over the summer, I, since I am a Bonner scholar, I began working with the BG um, HRA and um, I really resonated with the mission statement um, that the organization has. And also I love Dr. Pena. And so it's just been such an honor working with this organization. Um, over the summer, I had the chance to work on the Academy website. Um, I worked on just building of um, kind of like the back, like the framework of the website and just having, helping to get it started. I also had the chance to work with Asia with some archival work, um, cataloging on different magazines. And um, so that was my primary role. And then now I've just shift, shifted into um, a different role where I'm now working with Michaela and Asia and we're creating an undergraduated group, undergraduated group um, for um, undergraduate students who are interested in Black German studies. And so just, um, we're trying to build a network just to have like a support system. Um, being a major in German studies, I've come to realize how um, much of a predominantly white uh, field it is and how it's just really important to have a network and um, even if you aren't a minority in German studies, just having that support um, when you're studying these marginalized groups, Black Germans, it's just nice to have um, a little framework and support and connections. And so that's what we're trying to um, build. And we're gonna start having chances for people to sign up. And so we really just hope to build like, a little community for ourselves. And I think that's about it. That's kind of like my future plans just to grow the organization and then yeah so I'll hand it over now to Michaela. Hi <clears throat> sorry hi I'm Michaela Thornton um I'd like to thank everyone for being in attendance it means a lot that we have had so much interest and thank you for the introduction Dr. Fraser Rath. <clears throat> like she said I joined BGHRA as a first semester senior um, at James Madison University. And now I'm going into my second semester with BGHRA and my last semester at JMU. Um, I'm a psychology major and a German minor. And I began studying German in ninth grade at North Academy. It was, um, <clears throat> it was kind of like a rash decision. We were given the choice to choose between studying French, Spanish, or German. And most people were taking the Spanish route, understandably. And I just kind of wanted to switch it up and German sounded pretty cool. So that's what's, it was a pretty simple start that it actually ignited a deep passion for it. I really like a lot of aspects of German culture and I love German music and movies and TV shows. And my passion for it really started my, the summer before my senior year of high school um, because I was able to go on a three week exchange trip through my school and just being over there was amazing. All the people I met were incredible and just very like, very welcoming, but um, very also very different. And I think it's really interesting to see the differences between people that grow up in different areas. And um, that's when I really was like, okay, I'm actually very passionate about this. Like I was just kind of taking the classes before like to fill the language requirement. And that's when I became personal. Um, and then I went on to win the German language award my senior year of high school. And, and um, I declared my minor, I think my fresh, my first semester freshman year, I knew I wanted to minor in German. And then I ended up working as a research assistant for my most favorite Jamie professor, Dr. Holly Janicek, um, my second semester junior year. So I actually found out about BGHRA by attending a Zoom presentation that was advertised to me and my fellow German studies classmates. It was very interesting and well put together. And I was quickly intrigued because I've always had an interest in adoption and being somebody who plans to adopt myself, I thought it would be a good way to learn about it. Um, that's what first got me into it. And Dr. Pena has provided me with a plethora of educational resources, scholarly articles, recorded presentations that have taught me a lot about not only adoption research, but being biracial, like Black German heritage, Western Europe adoption, and so much more. Last semester, Olivia, Asia, and I all collaborated on a website so that we can have a platform to share information about ourselves and 
the foundation and what we're doing. We have a page on there with links to BGHRA events and a page where we share some of the educational resources that I mentioned before. And I will be updating that regularly this semester. And I'm also hoping to get involved creating designs for our um, BGHRA merchandise website. And since I'm graduating soon, I plan to join Sasha's graduate student initiative group and help move it forward. Um, and I'll be working with my academic advisor, um, Dr. Janicek, to find ways to generate interest in BGHRA on JMU's campus. We have an Instagram for JMU German students, and she recently posted on there about this conference. So if any of you are in attendance from that, hey guys. Um, Post-grad plans, I <clears throat> still plan to continue working with BGHRA, but hopefully abroad because I plan to move to Germany in the next year or so. Um, I also want to pursue a career in research, but I have a lot of like different interests that I'm gonna narrow down in the next few months, my last months here at JMU, which is very sad. But I'm interested in like virology, the history of German language, psychological research, adoption research, a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna have to figure that out eventually. But um, yeah, I'm really happy that I'm part of BGHRA. Everyone that I've met through it is so kind and supportive and I feel very comfortable here. And I'm just really excited to get even more involved in the upcoming months and just really help push it forward. So thanks again, everybody, for listening to me and for being here today. And yeah, that's it. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. And thank you, Dr. Fraser Rath, for that introduction. Um, I'm Asia Curtin. Um, so I originally started learning German as a means to an end. Um, I wanted to learn and eventually become fluent in order to move to Germany. Um, I guess it was to fulfill a language requirement. However, like since then, especially during my time at the BGHRA and also at UCSB, um, my interest in German studies outside of language learning has really grown. Um, I always thought of myself as pursuing graduate studies in English literature, um, but the classes I've taken at UCSB, um, the different works I've been able to engage with and everything I've learned during my work with the BGHRA has really caused me to think about German studies in ways that I never have beforehand. Um, so, as Dr. Fraser Rath has said, I'm really interested in how um, discourses in German studies intersect with urban studies, um, critical theory, and minority studies, and critical race theory. Um, I'm also interested in the theory and practice of literary translation and film and media studies. Um, so I've been working with the VGHRA for a little over a year. Um, I actually happened upon like this opportunity by chance. I was actually talking about Dr. Tiffany Florville's um, book that was coming out at the time with um, one of the head of the departments at UCSB. And I brought it up to her and told her I was really interested in learning more about Black German studies. And um, somehow Dr. Pena got in touch with her and that's how um, I started here. Um, so I'm the assistant to the president and a research assistant at the BG, BGHRA. And um, I primarily assist Dr. Pena with a variety of duties and tasks. I also e um, answer pretty much all of your emails. Um, and I was also um, active in assisting in the planning of this conference. And also, as Olivia and Michaela have already said, um, I've been working with them to facilitate an undergraduate group that would connect other undergrads in German studies and basically provide a support network as well as the ability to study and practice German with um, peers in other universities across the country. And I think this is important because um, German programs at many universities are very small. So I think it's really important um, to provide students with the opportunity to engage with a wider network of undergrads in German studies. Um, also, as I will be a graduate student soon, I hope to be active in the graduate student group. Um, so my future plans, um, 
the mentorship, the mentorship that I have received thus far at the BGH, BGHRA has been pivotal in my decision to pursue German studies further. Um, and I'm incredibly thankful for everyone at the BGHRA for their help. And as a first gen student, um, the thought of applying to grad school is very daunting and um, intim intimidating and somewhat confusing. So I'm thankful for um, Dr. Pena, Dr. Fraser Rath, um, also Dr. Irvin Malachi for helping me um, with that process. Um, as I said, I didn't originally plan to pursue German studies, but um, I will be pursuing German studies in the fall of 2022 as um, a doctorate um, student. So I'm excited about that. Thank you. Sorry, I'm part emotional, part technologically. I don't know what's happening. So um, thank you very much, Olivia, Michaela, and Asia. Um, and I think I think, you know, we just have so so much to look forward to um, with the five of you um, as as well, um, as Sasha and Pat, as we look to the future. Um, of not only this field, but because your work and your interests intersect with so many other fields, I mean, biology, physics, psychology, English, um, and beyond, you know, we have just so much to, to um, look forward to in so many different aspects of, um, of life. So thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing your experiences. And now I would like to invite um, all the wonderful people uh, in the audience today. And we have quite a few. And again, we're so grateful that you've stayed and listened to um, our wonderful students here um, to ask questions about not only um, our students' journeys to and through Black German studies, about their own um, work, their research, their experiences um, in classrooms and so on, um, but also, you know, about their futures, about their perspectives on the conference and so on. I think um, we have five unique perspectives here um, and a real opportunity right now to ask questions of, um, of our students and of, of really important people to the BGHRA. So please, um, please, you know, put your questions in the Q&A. The chat is blowing up. <laughs> wonderful stories. So exciting to see these connections. Thank you so much to all you brilliant, um, wonderful students, lots of claps and flowers and hearts. So wonderful. All right. So to get us started, though, with the Q&A section, um, I was wondering first if any of you would like to ask of each other any questions. Um, and or answer questions from me because I always have questions. Okay, um, Michaela, go ahead. Yeah, I have a question for Pat about your song. Um, <clears throat> what was the production like on that? How long did it take you to like create that? I thought it was really good and I'm very impressed. Um, just kind of want to hear a little bit more about your like process of creating it if you want to share. Um, yeah, so I started uh, making like beats on the program called Logic. Pro X. I don't know if you're familiar with that at all, but uh, basically the most of the drum track I found uh, like a royalty free like beat, and then I just chopped it up a little bit and put it down with uh, with like so I had those chords in the beginning, um, and then I it kind of breaks down to like this really weird beat. I don't know if you heard it, but it was kind of like weird, like a little like weird noises uh I just think it just adds to like um the like con it's kind of like a contrast to like a message over like a uh, interesting pr production style I would say like my my style of like beats uh often changes I just usually just sit down and and it kind of just I try to not think about it too much while, while I'm making it uh, so that it's it's the most natural thing that comes to, to my brain. And um, it took me for the lyrics portion. Uh, last semester, we had uh, 
this journal activity where we would do two journals about different topics. And during one of my journal uh, entries, I was actually just writing down some ideas and the kind of chorus came to mind. So I was like taking a walk and I was just thinking about it. And, and I just like, it, it came together uh, kind of, I, I can't really explain it as well. It's just because it just kind of came together so awesome. And, and the fact that I could do it for class was even cooler because um, having to like do all my studies and then have time to work on music is sometimes tough, but uh, I could combine that together last semester. And that was really important and cool for me. If that, does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, you did. Thanks for sharing. Nice job, by the way. Thank you so much. Awesome. So questions are starting to come in via the Q&A, uh, Q &A, but I do want to give space for any other questions amongst yourselves. Anything else that comes up right now? Okay. All right. So this, this question is for Sasha. Um, Sasha, how is your relationship with your sister now? And is she still in Germany? My relationship, so, so my sister's name is Selena. Um, my relationship with Selena is actually a lot better now that I know German and lived in Germany. Um, yeah, she still lives there. She's only been to the US maybe four times. Um, and we recently saw each other over Christmas. We spent Christmas together in Spain. Um, but it really does make a difference now that whenever she thinks something, she doesn't have to translate it. She can just say it in German and I understand her and we have that correspondence together. So um, yeah, we're really, really close now. Wonderful. Um, and this is also a question related to family and comes from um, VGHRA Vice President Kamina King. She says, thank you so much. Um, this one is for all of you. So how is your family reacting to your engagement with the VGHRA? Um, maybe, I don't know, do the classroom thing where I go across my screen. So Olivia, do you wanna begin? Okay, um, so I guess my family's reaction. Um, actually, my, let's see. I'm so sorry. My computer like, kind of lagged a little bit. So I just heard you call my name. No worries, no worries. Um, so how is your family reacting to your engagement with the BGHRA? Um, so actually my mom is on this, um, on the webinar. So she's, um, they're very supportive. Um, they. I guess my family just has always been supportive in my like endeavors with German. They've always like pushed me to like know more. And um, I guess it's just really exciting since, um, especially working with the BGHRA, I've never done web design. And so when I initially became an intern with the organization for web design, of course, um, it took a moment to like, learn it but like they were just like really happy that I was stepping outside of my comfort zone and just like um trying like new things so just overall they've just been really supportive and so it's just nice to have like the familial support and then of course the support I have within the organization itself so wonderful hi Olivia's mom I see I see lots of um family members here too of, of others of us um and so thank you all for joining us it's not often that we get to mix um you know our sort of academic lives with our personal lives and I think that's very special so Asia do you want to uh, go next um yeah I have a number of family members here as well so thank you guys for coming um yeah my family has been extremely supportive um like I said I've started undergrad as an English lit major so um I guess them seeing my journey from being um firmly set in African-American literature as like my future to German studies maybe has been a little um out of nowhere, but they've been supportive to me regardless. Um, anytime they hear anything about German, they always bring it up to me. So um, yeah, I'm glad to have such a great support system. Michaela. <clears throat> My family's also, um, as everyone else has said, very supportive of anything that I do really like 
they just kind of give me the space to just be myself and pursue what I want. They've never like ever put any opinions on what I want to do with my life. But my dad did also study German. Um, I'm not sure for how many years, but he has like some basic knowledge of it. So he was very excited when I went into um, German and they're also very excited about BGHRA because I've been um, going to predominantly white schools for my life or my whole life. And this gives me an opportunity to connect with um, other like black people that I wouldn't really be able to like on JMU's campus. Um, and so they're very excited about that because it's just, it's nice to like talk to other people and get like people who have similar perspectives to me and like will understand like what I'm going through and stuff. And yeah, so they're really happy about it. And also I, jo I joined um, the German Honor Society and my dad was like very excited about that. So yeah, they're just like my, my hype people, so yeah. Wonderful, great. Uh, Sasha? Yeah, I'm um, just kind of also echoing everyone. Um, my family is really supportive of me doing BGHRA. Uh, specifically my mom. Uh, my mom was also in the military. Um, she served in Germany in Bitburg in the 80s. And one of her best friends is also um, a Black German adoptee. So um, the fact that I'm kind of bringing this full circle for our entire family and also with relation to my sister, it, it hits home for us. And so the fact that this organization is even a thing, like my mom is very, very proud that not only that BJHR exists, but also that I get to take part in it. Sorry, I'm trying to find my unmute button. Thank you. That's it's incredible that there's so much support amongst family and that family members are here also supporting. Um, and Pat. Uh, yeah, so my mom is really happy that I'm a part of this organization. Uh, I do mostly so website work. So it's cool to learn a lot about like because I can apply these skills to a lot of different aspects of my life once I learn here and it's this is a really cool community community to be part of. So I'm really happy that I can help out anyway. Wonderful. Um, so we have so much knowledge in this room right now. And there's some questions um, regarding people's specific knowledge um, about specific things that were mentioned in your presentation. So um, one question is to Sasha, I'm assuming. Um, can, or was it Sasha? Yeah. Um, can you explain what Texas German is? please. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so Texas German is, because it still does exist, um, Texas German is a dialect of German that was spoken by early German settlers to Texas. So um, that includes German settlers who came directly from Germany and also from other German settlements in the U.S. and settled in Texas. Uh, it's a dialect that is still has a lot of German roots to it, but because of the area of Texas um, having English speakers, Spanish speakers, uh, also Polish and Czech speakers, it really has kind of developed into its own dialect of German that was spoken um, before the First World War. And unfortunately, because of the two world wars, it had a sharp decline because people were speaking or teaching less of it to their children. So now there's maybe about, um, I think, if I have my numbers correct, uh, maybe no more than 500 speakers of Texas German left. And because of their age, a lot of them, the youngest, I believe, is maybe in, the, in their early 80s. Um, the language will be dying out, unfortunately, in the next 10 to 15 years. So here at UT, we actually have a dialect project that preserves Texas German. So um, before I came to UT, a lot of graduate students went out into very rural parts of Texas to record um, people speaking Texas German and to try and preserve the dialect um, because it will, unfortunately, not longer be around. So we have tapes and tapes and tapes of people speaking Texas German. And um, there's YouTube videos on it as well. Um, we have our website for the university that has a whole thing of Texas German. You can listen to Texas German. It's very interesting to listen to. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of a synopsis of it. Brilliant, amazing. And, um, and, and maybe you could add on to that and say a little bit about Namibia and Kitchen German, since that might not be clear to, to everyone too. Yeah, um, so Namibian kitchen German. Um, so German colonialism, Germany uh, colonized Namibia. And for a lot of Namibians, native Namibians, 
to communicate with the German settlers, white German settlers that were there. They learned German, but they also kind of blended it similarly, similarly to Texas Germans, so this is kind of what my paper's on. Um, similar to Texas German, they blended it with a lot of the indigenous languages there. So um, Herero, Nama, um, and a few other languages that are speaking in Southern Africa. And um, so it sounds in a way, it has similarities to what people refer to in a way as a broken German, but it's not necessarily broken German because that's just how it's learned. Um, and Namibian Kitchen German, very similarly to Texas German, also has also died out because people have no really use for it, especially after German colonization um, ended. So Namibian Kitchen German mostly is spoken by Black Namibians in Germany, or I'm sorry, Black Namibians in Namibia, and um, wasn't spoken necessarily by the white Namibians who are still there. German is still spoken in Namibia, um, but it's mostly Hochdeutsch that's learned. And um, there's another version of Namibian German called Namdeutsch, which is what uh, white, white Namibians speak white Namibians of, of German descent. So Kitchen German and Namdeutsch are two different dialects of German spoken in Namibia. Thank you so much. I mean, I'm learning so much right now. Um, and it occurs to me how much Asia, Asia, your research and Sasha, uh, this, this particular aspect of your research is, have something in common with each other, right? Like this, this sort of cross border um, understanding of, of different kinds of Germans and modes of trans translation and that sort of thing. So um, I wonder, and maybe this is a question for all of you, but I'd like to start with Asia, is, is how did this interest in um, the, so this was coming off of your presentation and your thesis or your, um, your work right now, your research, um, how did that interest in translation um, from German to, or from, sorry, from English um, to German take place for you? And what have you learned along the way? And any connections that you see with Sasha's, Sasha's interest and then, and then we can go from there. Um, yeah, so as I was learning German, of course, one of the, my modes of thinking was um, thinking about the perceptions of African Americans in German culture um, in a variety of ways, as like Sasha talked about, um, how a lot of African Americans found solace in Germany, um, and in the example of Angela Davis. So it was interesting to see those intersections, but also as a literature major, I was interested in how um, Toni Morrison, for example, also James Baldwin, um, were translated into German because I didn't even know that there were German translations of those of their like most popular texts at all. So um, I was really interested in seeing how um, African American culture and language are um, translated um, in the specific example of literature in the German context. Um, so that's what originally got me interested in that. And I think in um, some ways, um, it's interesting, especially to see how sometimes African Americans are um, kind of seen, um, especially maybe in literary translation, sometimes translation when it comes to um, media and film, how they're seen as like similar to Turkish Germans and how sometimes those um, there seems to be like a, I guess a translation that translates AAVE into Turkish German dialect, um, which can be problematic in some ways. But um, yeah, it's interesting to see how kind of African American culture gets translated sometimes as Turkish German culture in a way, or how translators may seem that see that there's similarities. So um, yeah, I guess I was just primarily interested in seeing how, why that occurs and how that occurs, especially in literature. Thank you so much. And, you know, um, many of us have come to German studies through this interest in language. Um, but Michaela, your story really struck me because it, it's my story too. Like, basically, I didn't want to take any more French. And so like, first semester of German, you know, like 2000, whatever that was, um, at Bucknell, I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll take German. And it just stuck kind of a thing. Um, I was wondering if anyone, if Michaela, you have more to elaborate on sort of your journey through 
um, through learning German and then and the interest in German culture as it's come along. And then Pat, you have a unique perspective too because you came to German um, sort of on the side, right? You're already fluent in Polish. Your family is from Poland. And um, unfortunately, Pat was supposed to moderate um, our, our panel on Polishness and Blackness at this conference, but we had to cancel that panel um, due to unforeseen circumstances. So maybe you have something to say about that, um, the, well, that, about your experience with Polish and German and English and so on. And then Olivia, I'm coming back to you too. So Michaela, then Pat. <clears throat> um, so you're asking basically just how I, um, my interest in German kind of just grew into what it is. Okay. Yeah. Well, to be honest, when I first started taking it, I wasn't very interested in the language. Like I said, just filling the language requirement and it was just kind of something to do. And when I went over there, the thing that like really struck me was how environmentally friendly like German culture is. And I'm pretty sure like European countries in general are um, very like environmentally conscious. And I really want to live in a society like that because it's just, it's kind of hard being here and like seeing how like wasteful we can be and knowing that there's like things we can do about it. And um, so seeing that and then just like interacting with German people, like they're just so interesting and they're so curious about like other cultures outside of their own. And that's what made me like more into the language, just like the people themselves is what made it like like special to me. And um, I actually really, like once I started to get the hang of German grammar, it like kind of became fun. Like I feel like we all know the struggle of learning German grammar, it's quite complex, but um, it started just becoming like really fun and like being able to like sing songs in German and understand what they're saying in TV shows and stuff. It just makes me feel like very satisfied and like makes me feel like my intelligence is just growing. And yeah, that's, that's that. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, we can all really, I think to the, the grammar struggle but also the grammar fun now, mm. I think. Yeah, Olivia's not. <laughs> Pat, um, can you talk to us more about um, about your language journey? So I came into college um, with the requirement for language done, but I did want to expand uh, and like learn another European language. And my initial choices were like Spanish or French. And then I I needed to fill up. So we have a, like a web tree in Davidson and you should fill up everything. And I was like, I don't know what else it takes. So I asked my mom and she's like, you should try German. It's it's really helpful. It'll help you with a lot of different things in life. And I was like, at the moment I was like thinking, I was like, I don't know how it can apply to me. But then I ended up not getting any of the classes, but German. So I guess my mom was right. <laughs> and it's taken me down this journey. So I'm, I'm really happy. Uh, I took it freshman year. I took 101, then 102, Dr. Fraser Rath, and then uh, Black German Art and Resistance last semester. And um, I'm not taking any more German classes per se, but I really like um, the culture and learning more about how the like European, how related it was um, to Polish culture and seeing the similarities and applying it to my life and just really gaining a new and broader perspective of, of history and, and then everything in general. So. Yeah, I want to say, damn you, web tree, but, but, but also like it brought you to us and it brings many people to German who can't get into Spanish. So it's good in that way. It's something to consider, I suppose. And Olivia, you have um, also a unique story vis-a-vis um, -vis the German language. You actually came to Davidson having already had some German um, and so started with um, what was the intro to German cultural studies, which is a you know, next level sort of class. So um, could you talk to us a little bit about that and your choice to continue German at, at college? Yeah, so um, I guess I kind of mentioned it in my presentation as like growing up, I just like always had this interest in German studies, um, always like learned about it. Like um, since like growing up Jewish, I always like from a young age, we were taught about Germany basically. And so when I started taking the language in middle school, I started, I guess I fell in love with the language one and then also learning more about the histories and um, similar to Michaela um, in my high school is stressed a lot on 
the benefits of German society with like environmentalism and um, just like sciences. And so um, going into college, I knew that I wanted a focus with biology and then I also want to go abroad. So I knew like continuing German would be in my best interest and just it's also a passion I have. And so um, I guess there was never, there was never like a time in my studies of undergrad that I didn't want to pursue German. So that's kind of why I've been continuing to take it on and just, um, I really just like finding more about the um, other histories like that we're learning about. And so, yeah. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, yes, thank you, Asia, for pointing that out. That, um, there's many links and, and lots of, um, <laughs> lots more comments in the chat, but also a question from um, Ajibola, who's um, a graduate student and moderator at this conference from uh, UBC. So uh, Ajibola says, if there's still some time, if there is time, we have until 3.30, so ask away, everyone. I would, um, I would like to ask what has been the challenges um, in, your, in all of your scholarship so far within the field and, and maybe beyond the field? What kind of challenges have, have there been? Anyone wanna, anyone thinking of anything? I know, um, I know I've, I've spoken with some students and uh, in the past that it's difficult sometimes to pursue interests in certain fields, right? This is something we deal with um, in, in many departments in German studies, probably all departments in German studies when, um, when you're studying something specific or in a field that's not well represented. Um, like Black German studies, there's only really a handful of scholars who engage with Black German studies within the United States, right, um, who are positioned at universities, that's, that's what I mean. Um, so uh, maybe, maybe that's been a source of contention or frustration for some, but I don't want to speak for you. That's kind of something, yeah, that I uh, wanted to add um, to, to what you just said, Emily. Um, definitely a challenge that I've experienced is kind of making sure that or seeing that black german studies has validity and a lot of um and again up against a lot of other fields in german studies um also just kind of because i've been interested in black german studies since i was an undergrad but especially when i was an undergrad um i didn't think that i could just study black german studies or just focus on black german studies um similarly to um what asia was saying before i thought i had to like look at turkish german or Keats Deutsch or things of that nature because it's more represented. And um, I didn't think that Black German studies had um, held enough water to have a specialty in. But now that I've now gone through my undergraduate degree and I'm in my master's degree now, I see that there is a community for it. It's coming up now and there definitely are scholars at different schools that study it and uh, more people that are interested in it. So um, that before was a challenge, but now that I've come along a bit further, um, I've seen that Black German studies clearly does have a place and people are interested in it. And there are enough people who um, are represented by it. So it's just as important as every other discipline. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other insights? I think also um, maybe feeling like you have a place, I think beforehand, before when I was still learning German, um, before I knew that there was a such thing as an Afro-German or Black German history, I didn't think that there was a place for me in German studies. So I think just feeling like there's a place for you in this field at all may be a challenge at first, um, but there definitely is, and there's people who will support you. Makila, did you have something else? Yeah, I was just going to quickly add that I think one of the challenges that I've noticed um, just generally with learning the language is the fact that there's so many different dialects in like all of Germany. And sometimes it makes me feel a little like, I wouldn't say hopeless, but a little like intimidated, I think is a good word because I'm like, I just feel like there's no possible way for me to learn like every single word in every single dialect. And it's just kind of like, a little frustrating but I also think that um makes it even more interesting that you could go to like the other side of Germany and it could sound like completely different like 
just the way they pronounce things and like the words that they use, the slang too. Like it's a little, it's like very complex and like intricate, but it's also very interesting. So yeah, I would say that a little bit of a struggle for me, but yeah, it's good. Thank you. All right, we have questions on questions now in the Q&A, so let's get to some of those and some really great ones. So um, uh, Carolina, Carolina Riga says, thank you so much for sharing your stories and insights and doing it so eloquently. I have a question for all the speakers. I'm wondering whether you had a chance to see a number of presentations over the past three days and which one ones from this uh, conference have touched you the most? And are there new interests developing based on the presentations you have heard? I know for a fact you guys were at a lot of the presentations because uh, you're taking notes and live tweeting for us and doing all the things um, and also presenting yourselves, Asia. So um, other than Asia's and maybe, <laughs> Maybe I mean for me, Asia's was a, a real highlight. Um, what what presentations have stuck out for you? And Asia, obviously, Asia's okay. Let's... I think one um, one interest that I'm currently cultivating, and especially since I'm currently taking a German class that focuses in part on. Um, Theater, um, of course, Bertolt Brecht. Um, I think um, today's presentation on um, Emmett Till, um, deep in my heart, really, um, really interested me. Not only because I see a lot of um, Brechtian influence in that um, play as a whole, and I would love to see it when it eventually is available to American audiences. But um, being um, able to see how, um, how not only whiteness and blackness are constructed in the theater, but also deconstructed is very interesting to me. So um, at least for today, that presentation really stood out to me. Thank you. And others in the chat agreeing that your your presentation in particular was a highlight. Others, I um went to the transmigration and transnationalism panel, and I thought the two speakers were so intelligent. Like they just like radiated knowledge, and um, their stories were really interesting. It was I'm not quite sure how to pronounce their names. But the first lady talked about um, albinism and I've never really like thought much about that, but I just thought it was really interesting. And one thing that stuck out to me was that apparently like albinism can be dangerous for people in like some African countries and that like, that kind of like made me sad to hear. Um, but she just kind of talked about how she writes like children's books and um, growing up in Germany and just sharing her story. And the second person talked about ethnicity and how it's like a social construct and um just really interesting perspective on that and I don't know I just I think what really stood out to me was just how like smart they were and yeah it was really interesting yeah that was in Gazi uh, in Gozi and um Basiro Kamara who's uh, Rosemary's nephew and also um a collaborator with the BJHRA yeah I agree it was brilliant all right, so Olivia. Um, I think for me, the um, panel yesterday, the post-war adoption and family reunification, um, just hearing the story of how the three sisters found each other and just the different experiences was really, it was really moving and like um, impactful. And before even working um, with the BG HRA, I didn't realize how traumatic adoption could be. And so that's just now kind of an interest in me, just looking at um, the different impacts like transnational adoption can have on individuals in the process of reunification. And I think for me, um, one that I found particularly touching um, was uh, there was a panel on Thursday, um, the Life Stories panel with um, the Thompson family and then Professor um, Walters Henderson. And that 
panel for me was um, very touching because I, I could relate to a lot of the sentiments and experiences that they shared, um, especially coming from a military family, having half German siblings and not always having that connection to them because of whether it be family ties, um, personal ties, the that there is between the two countries, between the US and Germany. Um, now that I'm an adult, it's a lot easier to have that connection with my sister, but um, I'm just thankful that I had the opportunity to connect with my sister because um, I know that that's not always the experience of Black Germans or also their African-American families. Thank you all for sharing that. Um, uh oh, I think we lost Michaela. Um, Pat, did you have anything to ask? Add? Uh, yeah, so I, I, um, I saw the panel on Friday about intersectional Black poetics. And I thought both of the speakers were really like cool and like their their stories and what they had to say was really like eye-opening and the first speaker talked about how uh the different forms of activism and particularly the humble forum performance and i i thought it was really interesting how they're trying to de deconstruct these uh like false narratives that are presented in museums and so um I, I found like I was thinking about that the whole, like the rest of the day. And so it was just, it was cool uh, to have that kind of realization. Absolutely. I think that's also something, I mean, not to toot to our horn some more here at the BGHRA, but, but to do that is to say that this conference is pretty unique in that, you know, it's not often that we get to hear from undergraduates and it's not often um, that undergraduate students take interest and come to the, a conference like this, um, an academic conference. And so I think I think, it, and sharing your perspectives here um, makes me realize that that's, that's a real shame and, and can really, um, you know, light the fire in, in some ways that, um, that maybe we, we as professors, people in, in German studies don't have often think about. So thank you for sharing those favorites. Um, so I, another question to go along sort of with your favorites, your preferences, that sort of thing comes again from Kavina. Um, what are some of your favorite, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, your favorite German cultural items, your favorite films, shows, music, artists, other artists, novels uh, to learn the German language with? I think instructors could learn a lot from y'all. What, she, she didn't say y'all, I said y'all. <laughs> what should instructors of German add to the curriculum to make German more fun to learn? How can we attract more brilliant students like you? So what's worked for you? What do you enjoy? For the first um, year or so that I was learning German, I was um, not in the classroom setting. So I primarily use YouTube. Um, I think um, Deutsch mit Benjamin is a really good resource, especially if you're B1, B2 levels, C1. Um, I always found YouTube was very beneficial for me. I think Duolingo might be beneficial if you're just starting out, um, definitely not in the long term. Um, but I always found that also watching um, Netflix and listening to podcasts really helped my listening skills as well. Absolutely. Pat? Um, yeah, so for me, uh, what I found most helpful was being able to, we have these hours called Treffpunkt tre hours at Davidson and having that where we could go and talk to a professor about, or another student about like our daily lives and stuff, just like really relating like how you can communicate and learn about other people in a different language is what kind of uh, attracted me to know it because I can learn so many more perspectives if I know this language. I'm not only bound to people who can speak English. So I think that was a big uh, attraction for me. Olivia? Um, I think for me, the most helpful was listening to German music, um, just um, going on like Spotify and just seeing like what's trending today over there. And just um, I guess listening to the genres that I would listen to um, in English. And so just 
that's really helped me. And then um, Netflix also has some really good shows that are now in German or just having the option to tr um, turn the language into German has also been really helpful. Michaela joining us got kicked off and is back. I'm so glad to see you. We're just talking about um, our favorite German cultural objects, whatever that might be for you. Um, Pat said, Treffpunkt uh, Deutsch, which is where we meet and speak German um, together each week. Um, Olivia mentioned uh, music, YouTube videos, um, and we're also mentioned. So anything that sticks out for you, a particular book or novel or a, a film or genre? Yeah, um, sorry about that, by the way. I, don't, I have no idea what just happened to my computer. But um, <clears throat> I would agree with music. I have like a full German, just German music playlist of like 150 songs. Um, and I like a lot of German rap. Um, I feel like that helps me learn the slang a lot, which is important to me because I don't want to like be interacting with Germans and speaking like very formally. Like I want to be able to speak like colloquially. Um, and let me think. Yeah, there's actually a TV show that I watch called um, Druk and it's just a teen TV show, but it's really good. And I think that also helps me like see how like Germans around my age, like interact with each other. And I mean, like obviously it's acting, but like you can still get a feel for it. And I watch it with um, like in German, but with English subtitles. And that helps me like be able to like translate it a little bit in my head. Like, so yeah, that's what I would say for that. Awesome. And uh, Zari, to whom I own, owe an email, um, asks here, um, are the speakers, or so are all of you writing in German and watching films in German? Um, I mean, hopefully, right? <laughs> like in your German classes. Yeah. Like, I'm actually, um, this semester, I wasn't able to take any German classes because they didn't line up with my schedule. So what I do is um, I like to journal a lot. So I'll sometimes journal in German and uh, I found that really helpful. Or when I'm reading, sometimes I'll read aloud, like I'll read the English words, I'll read them aloud in German to just help um, practice and so. That's a really good way to learn German. Yes, take notes, you know, watch, listen. Um, read, 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 read. Yes. Good. Well, um, we're coming to an end here. I just want to give you all um, another moment. Is there anything else that you'd like to mention, bring up, talk about, or ask of our audience members? Yes, and uh, Sasha, please answer. Um, our questions here. Oh, uh, sorry, there is another question in the, in the uh, Q&A. Our last question, do you have any tips for how to attract students of color um, to German at the college level? Sasha? Um, yeah, I was thinking about the last question too. And I guess, I don't know, at one point I transitioned from a German learner to a, just a German speaker. Um, but since I also, uh, I TA German, I teach lower level German at the university. Um, something that has already also been mentioned by Asia, Michaela, and Olivia um, is just using German music. And I think that's a really good tool to attract um, students of color because oftentimes, especially like with, with hip hop or even with any other genres, there's more representation with Germans of color. And I think oftentimes when students see themselves reflected in the course, that makes them want to take it. So for example, when I teach my German classes, I make sure that I put on um, music from Asian Germans, Black Germans, Turkish Germans, mixed Germans, all backgrounds. So students can really see themselves reflected. And there's also tons of German music that mix languages in the songs. So there's, uh, you can have a song with English, Spanish, German, and Turkish in one song. And I think that really, especially here in Texas where a lot of people speak Spanish, that really resonates with students. So that's how I try to kind of relate to students with, with music. That's amazing. And I think I think you point out something really important here, um, Sasha, and something that you'll experience to um, Asia and um, Michaela and Pat and Olivia when you eventually go to grad school and teach classes is that at some point you're both a student and a teacher. 
um, and that we need to be considering what that means, right? So um, it's a unique position, and I, you know, I'm not that too far off from grad school life, and that that sort of precarity of that position is also, you know, there's a there's a part of it that's interesting because you can teach in the way. In, in ways that are not the way that you're always taught, that, that, you know, you're not lectured. You don't, for me, I don't like to be lectured to, so I wouldn't lecture to my students, that kind of a thing. Um, there's a unique perspective there that I think we all need to take more seriously. So thank you for reminding us of that. And with that, I just wanna um, just, you know, we have some closing remarks for the conference and for this panel. Um, and I think that, you know, I'm wishing all five of you all the success in the world going, for, uh, going forward. And of course, we have a meeting soon, so we'll be in touch. And I'm so excited um, to continue our work together. Thank you, Olivia, um, Asia, Sasha, Pat, and Michaela for your wonderful perspectives today. And if we could give them all some love in the chat as we have been, um, that would be wonderful. You guys, um, thank you also for all the love you've been giving um, all along. So with that, uh, we are closing. I don't know why I'm like gonna cry, but um, we are closing our, our conference. Um, this has been an incredible four days on um, the 10th anniversary conference for the BGHRA, the, or sorry, the 10th year anniversary of the BGHRA, the fifth international conference. Um, and we have so many people to thank. So first, uh, thank you to uh, the moderators, the hosts, the sponsors, presenters in the IT team, uh, who is here represented at Rut Rutgers Camden. Um, thank you to all the panelists and to the keynotes. Thank you to our conference organizing committee, Keith Green, who you met at various points, um, both in the introductory comments to the, or to the conference, but also um, as moderator on multiple panels, who's associate professor of English and director of the Africana Studies Program at Rutgers Camden. Thank you to Angela Kothena, uh, associate professor of cinema studies and German, and Associate Chair of Graduate Study in the Department of Germanic Literature, Languages and Literatures at the University of Toronto. Thank you to Sarah Lennox, um, who is Professor Emeritus of um, German Studies and, director of, and also former Director of the Social Thought and Political Economy Program at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. And of course, thank you to Dr. Rosemary Tenya, um, who is the founder and president of the VJHRA um, and friend, mentor, and just wonderful human being. Um, we'd also like to thank Maseho for her beautiful artwork, which she has allowed us to use in the visual representation of this conference and which Sasha so wonderfully used to design much of our merch or all of our merch that we have um, so far. So be sure again to check out the merch. Um, Maseo is a Black German, specifically Maseo uh, a Hanseatic visual concept artist, writer, curator, poet, and storyteller. Or to sum it up, as she says, an Afro-cultural artivist made in Hamburg. So check out Maseo's work um, and also the discussion we had with her last semester um, on our YouTube page. Thank you as well to Bronwyn Okpako and Sarah uh, Blaskovitz for sharing their wonderful films with us. You have until the end of today to view them, so be sure you do. As Rosemary mentioned, um, after the conference is always before the conference with the BGHRA. We are looking forward to next year's collaborative conference says with the DDGC, Diversity and Decolonization in the German Curriculum Group, and of course the BGHRA. In the meantime, we are so excited to continue our online series together with the support of Davidson College, Davidson College's Dean Rusk International Speakers Fund, the German Embassy, the Department of Germanic Languages and Literatures at the University of Toronto, the Department of Africana Studies at Rutgers Campion, and the Davidson Arts Across the Curriculum Grant. We've been able to host conversations and lectures with so many fabulous um, activists, artists, authors, filmmakers, scholars, and community members. Our series up until this conference has been called All Black Lives Matter. And our series after the conference, starting Thursday, is called Black Germany and Beyond. 
be sure you like and subscribe our YouTube channel, um, Black Germans, to stay connected. And also like us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And follow our new student account um, at BGHRA Students if you haven't already. Thank you to the students in our Davidson German 351 uh, race gender migration class, including Olivia, um, who has been live tweeting our conference this weekend in German and in English. So thank you to Duncan, Rebecca, Carson, Conrad, again, Olivia, Brela, and Steffi for all of your work this weekend and this semester thus far. We are always looking for ways to connect and support each other, so please be in touch. The Institute and the BGHRA are growing and we're growing fast and we'd love for you to be involved. Um, finally, last but not least, please join us for our after party at 4 p.m. Eastern, that's in about 30 minutes, to celebrate a wonderful weekend together. Unfortunately, our room can only hold 100 people, so it's going to be first come, first serve, um, but we welcome everyone to come and connect um, and share and celebrate, including parents and family members um, who are visiting us uh, for this final panel. Thank you all so much for coming and taking part in our 10th anniversary and fifth, um, and fifth international conference. Um, we wish you well and more soon.